What's up, everyone? Hello, hello. So today we're gonna do a speed reviews video, and you may say, Jess, what? What's a speed reviews video? I haven't seen you do one in a year, and you would be right. <laughs> it has been nearly a year. The last speed reviews video I did was, I'm pretty sure, the last video I filmed before having Felicity, which was almost a year ago, 10 months ago. So that's wild. I thought I had done one like two months ago. Nope, That my brain just can't. Like, why do I have no concept of time passing? Like, are you guys the same way? Ugh. Anyway, regardless, here we are. So the idea behind these is twofold. One, it's called Speed Reviews, Jess, so it's supposed to be faster, less time per product. So I'm really gonna try it today. <laughs> we'll see. So the idea behind it is that, you know, I do a lot of first impressions, trying new makeup videos at least once a month. Um, and a lot of times you'll hear about my favorites in other videos, or you'll hear about like, oh my gosh, this product was terrible, avoid. But all of those other products that are kind of in between that I just don't mention or I don't mention often after that first impressions, that's what this video is for. It's a follow through on the things I've been trying that maybe I haven't thought to bring up again. So there are little reviews for each of these. So let's dive in. If you're curious about what I'm wearing, this top is from Target, I can link below. I did a Target haul uh, like just a couple videos ago. So fun, got a lot of new clothes and stuff. And I'm really into like just these comfy long sleeve shirts that are just plain. I don't know why, but I just, I think they're so like cute and simple. And anyway, uh, and Target had a lot of good ones. So definitely check that video out. I would love you if you did. Let's start with palettes because I have two palettes here that I really, like I bought, I tried on video and never mentioned again. And I have good reasons for both of them. I'm excited to chat about. So let's start with what I'm wearing on my eyes today. So this is the By Mario Ethereal Eyes Palette, which by the way, I've been saying by, makeup by Mario. And I heard him in a video today say his name is Mario. I'm like, wow, I've been saying that wrong. So by Mario, this palette is sold out currently on his site. Look how beautiful it is. I mean, there is a reason. I don't buy a ton of palettes all of the time. I really don't. This one though, the second I saw it, I literally bought it right away. The colors, 10 out of 10, love. Love the shimmer colors in here. So the thing I like about by Mario's brand, he does a lot of like really like low key looks like this. And he does a lot of like wet looking type glitters, which is one of my favorite looks in the world. I think it is so pretty. So much so that some of my favorite products by him are like single ones that do that, but they would shatter. My guess is when he, he was saying that this was like his dream palette, like he has been wanting to create this palette for so long. My guess is he probably wanted the shimmer formula to be more similar to those other. I'll link the specific products I'm talking about below because I cannot think of the name of them, but those would shatter so much. I, I think he knew if they put it in the palette, they would, all of them would shatter constantly and it would be a nightmare, PR nightmare, just a nightmare in general. So I think these were adjusted a bit and they're really, they're pretty, but they're just not quite as like wet looking as those other products. So that's my theory on this. Regardless, the mattes in here are absolutely stunning. They are the some of the easiest mattes to blend. That's true from like the matte palette that he has out easiest mats in the world to blend. The shimmers are all toppers, meaning you just, you're meant to just tap them on top. So I've talked about this, I wanna say a month or two ago, and I kind of was like, I don't know guys, I don't think it's worth the money. Like, and I, I, I'm not sure that it is worth the money. The reality is it's sold out right now, so most of you right now can't get your hands on it anyway. My thing is, I like some of the looks I can get out of it. This is definitely my favorite go-to look with this. So what I did, just so you know, and you can see me putting it on, I took uh, kind of one of these light medium brown shades, put it all over the crease, it blends so easily. Took the deeper brown kind of on the outer area and along the lash line a bit. And then I tapped the kind of medium shimmer all over the lid, put a little bit of the light shimmer in the center. That was that. I love this look, but that's pretty much how I use it. I'll dip into the rose and a few other things, but the looks tend to look pretty similar. That's probably on me because I'm not a makeup artist. My point is, if you don't like these kinds of shimmer toppers, do not spend $70 on this palette, please. Even if I know a lot of you guys are makeup lovers and you're like, but, but you might not use it. Like if you know you won't use that style of thing, I just wouldn't. And honestly, I don't know. It's one of those things like if I were to do it again, would I buy it again? I just don't know. And I feel like products that I love, love, love deeply, I'm like, yes, I'd buy it again. And this one, I'm just kind of on the fence. I like it, I have it. I like the look that this creates, you know what I mean? But there we go, that was not fast, sorry. I'll go faster on this next palette. The Anastasia Nouveau palette. This had a moment. Like people were really into this a while ago. I bought it, I have used this maybe four times. I can't get into it. 
I can't get into it. And this is one that I bought because I was like, it's been a while since I've tried an Anastasia palette. I like her formula. I think the formula on this is fine. I just, none of the colors are ones I like love. This is kind of unique, which I think is cool. This shade um, Wings, um, especially if you're into kind of a goldeny. but I was hoping it would be a little greener than that. And so it's really pretty, but that was kind of one of those things that I was like, oh, I was hoping it would come off a little more like sage green. Um, here's one though that is a little sagier, but I wanted something in between those. Anyway, the shimmers are nice. I've used them, the, the mattes are nice, but I just don't think for the colors I use and typically go for, I, I mean, there's a reason I haven't used it, right? So unless you know you'll use these colors, I just don't think it's worth it. The quality, however, is definitely there. This is a very high quality palette. So it really is a personal choice. It's just one that I don't reach for a lot. I can definitely see myself. I'm not ready to get rid of it yet, but I can see that being something that I eventually get rid of because if I'm not using it, you know, why do I have it? Was that faster? I hope so. <laughs> Let's talk about some things I did love. There are a lot of duds we're gonna talk about here too. A lot of like expensive products I didn't like. So um, first off, one I loved, no surprise, the e.l.f. Woe Glow. There are a lot of other favorites of mine I'm not mentioning here because I'm gonna be doing, and actually I probably shouldn't even mention this one. I'm gonna be doing a current favorites because I haven't done a favorites video in a minute other than like my Jammy Awards, but it's been a few months. So I wanna do a current fave. So a lot of products that would typically be in this video, I'm saving for that because I figure it'd just be kind of redundant. So just know that there are a lot more products I'm gonna be sharing that are like my ultimate favorites. This is an ultimate favorite, the Woe Glow. It's SPF 30, a dupe-ish for the Super Goop Glow Screen. I reach for this more right now because it gives a glow to the skin and I'll show you what it looks like on my skin right now. It gives a glow but it's not as glowy as the Super Goop. So if you've tried the Super Goop and you thought, no, it's like a little bit too glowy for me, you would probably really like this one. You'd probably like it a lot more. This is so easy to apply to the skin. It's so pretty. It works really well under makeup. I just, it is a really good product. I'm trying to figure out, I'm having like little breakouts and I'm, I'm praying that it's not this. <laughs> Please don't be this. I don't think it is because I've stopped using this for a few weeks and it's still there. So I'm, I'm trying to narrow down, but I've been having like these kind of like, they're almost not breakouts, it's almost like rashy, but it's really slight. Like just like a little bit bumpy. Let me know if you've had experience with this, like what you think it might be. I kind of looked into it and it was like, it could be SPF. So I like literally just laid off SPF for a few weeks. Um, they said it could be um, like fluoride in your toothpaste. So I laid off fluoride for a few weeks. So I've laid off a lot. It could be like heavy moisturizer. So I've literally just not moisturized that area other than when I'm like putting on makeup. Even at night, I just wouldn't moisturize it. And it's still there. I think it's a little better. But anyway, let me know if you know anything. I might need to actually like go in and see my dermatologist. It's obviously not super obvious, but you know, I want to like get, get ahead of it. <laughs> so I hope it's not this. Like I said, I've taken a few weeks off and it's still there. So I'm like, I don't think it was but uh, this is gorgeous, absolutely recommend. Okay, a concealer that I, when I first tried it, I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. The more I've tried it, the more I've absolutely fallen in love with it is the Milk Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer. This is one of those concealers that is so lovely and creamy that you really can use it anywhere on your face if you are into putting concealer elsewhere. It is beautiful. So I'll apply it to my under eyes. I'll usually let it sit for like, 30 seconds to a minute and just get a little bit tackier. I don't even know that this needs it, but I just, I love the way this looks when I do that. It is just a pretty concealer. I feel like it covers a lot. It plays well with other makeup, you know, and powder and stuff like that. I feel like it doesn't crease any more than like other favorite concealers of mine, you know? I just really like it and I feel like it stays in place. It doesn't break up and look weird by the end of the day and that's huge because some concealers can look great that first few hours and then they look weird. This one looks nice all day long. So I was pretty impressed. I'm, yeah, I have the color 6C and it seems to be a perfect concealer shade for me, if you were curious. So what's on my lips right now is the Tarte Maracuja Lip Plump. I really like this formula. Like I don't have any other lip color or lip liner on with it. I do think this color is not for everyone and I'm not even totally convinced that it's for me, like for an everyday like this, but when I would put it on top of like other lipstick colors, it always looked a little odd. So it's the shade Cherry Blossom. This is the one Taylor loves. It looks so good on her. I even saw it on her in person and it looked really good on her. Um, it's just like a nice light milky pinky type shade. If you have a shade recommendation for me, let me know. Cause I want to buy another. Cause I like the actual formula. I just want to try another shade and I don't want to buy a whole pack. You know, like you can get the three packs. And I'm like, I don't need that many shades. I want to find like one that's like my go-to to live in my purse. But for now, this is it. And I really do like it. 
Like I said though, I feel like it plays weird with other lip colors on my lips, so I just wear it alone. Which, I mean, that's really probably how it's meant to be worn, but I love it. Minty tingle, really nice. And I don't know, I don't think it's like super plumping, but you guys know my lips are pretty lined and I feel like the lines are not nearly as obvious with this on. I've still been testing out the um, Shark blow dryer curling thing that's like the dupe for the Dyson Airwrap. Really liking it. I'm getting better at it day by day. I've done it now like four or five times and I, I definitely get better at it each time. So boy, in a year, I'm gonna be teaching classes on it, you know, but I definitely am planning like an update to talk more about that, maybe do um, some kind of short. I'm sitting literally sideways, you guys. Um, literally maybe do a short or something about it. <laughs> okay. This is another like viral, I'm stretching my legs out if you're curious. That's why I'm saying I've got too much in front of me, so I gotta do it to the side. This is a product that is absolutely viral. And the reason this has gone viral is kind of funny. So it's the Makeup Forever HD Skin All-in-One Face Palette. I wanna start by saying this is not a bad product. I just don't think anyone really needs it unless you get ready this way. So the reason I think it went viral is because everyone was doing that thing where you do the dots of all, cause there's, the idea is that there's like foundation and concealer in here, there's bronzer, highlighter, um, blush. So you can do your whole face with it, right? And so everyone was doing that thing where they dot all of the colors in the right areas and then blending it all in and then they're going, you know, <laughs> as you do on TikTok. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. But my point is I think a lot of us, you know, you see that and you're like, wow, that looks absolutely gorgeous. And it does look really pretty at the end, but it's a lot of work to do that. It's a lot of work to do that. I mean, I'm not convinced that that saves you time. And on top of that, like you'll see, I haven't even really played with these up here very much. Um, so I still am experimenting with it, but I just don't think it's one of those things that most people will get a lot of use out of. I'm forcing myself to use it. So today I used this peach blush, very, very thin formula. Definitely it got a little bit of emollients to it, but there's a little bit of transparency in it too. So it's easy to blend. I think it always looks nice, but it's not something that I feel like is above and beyond anything else. Like I said, I'm kind of forcing myself to use it to make sure I know how I feel about it, but it's not something I'm dying to use. Like every time I use it, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll use it, <laughs> which is crazy because it's expensive. So that's my two cents on this one. I just don't think most people would need it, you know? or even really love it. And I also don't think the wear time on that, that is great. Like I've mostly been using the blush and bronzer and on those, I really don't think it wears super long. <sighs> this foundation, man. So this is the House Labs Tri-Clone Skin Tech Foundation. You know, the other, this should be like titled all the viral things and how I feel about it because almost, I like looking out, most of these are viral. Maybe I'll just change the name completely. <laughs> this is, so good. So I'm wearing it today. Let me show you me applying it. It blends in like a dream. It looks best, I think, over a glowy base, but the beauty of this foundation is it will take the, the shape of whatever primer you have underneath. So if you've got a super matte base, it's gonna look not wildly matte, but it's definitely gonna lean matter. So I like that it plays well with primer. Like you actually can trust that the primer can work with it. I don't know how else to explain it, but that's just something I've noticed about it. When I've tried it with more mattifying primers, I've, I've just noticed it is a different finish, but there is some different science-y stuff behind this. They talk about how there's multiple silicones in it and this, that, and the other. My point is it really does look nice on the skin. It's medium coverage, maybe plus, you can kind of layer it. I love the finish it gives with the, my favorite primers and I feel like it wears nicely. It's just one of those foundations, you guys. It's like actually, it's gone viral, but it's actually really good. So if you're curious, I wear the shade 100 Light Neutral and I think it's a, actually a really good shade match for me. ELF came out with their Luminous Putty Bronzers. These are pretty nice. They really are. So today I was applying it with a random Rare Beauty brush, um, which I actually don't even love this brush for anything, but it worked pretty well because my biggest gripe with the ELF putty products is that they're tiny. Like I'd rather it be thinner and more spread out so it's easier to get your brush in because I like to apply my cream bronzer with a bigger brush. That's just the way I roll. So that is one big con to me, but the formula is really pretty. It's really easy to blend in. One thing to keep in mind with these is I feel like you kind of have to put a lot on. <laughs> like you can really pile it on. I was just going to town in here and putting it on and it still was not like ba bam in your face, which I actually kind of like that it's not, but I think for some people that might be a con. So if you're someone that you don't wanna have to think too hard about your bronzer, you wanna be able to kind of go crazy and it still look nice, I think you'll really like these. I feel like I'm going faster, do you guys? 
Am I doing a good job? Give me a grade. I was someone in school that like one million percent was all about my grades. Not like to an unhealthy level, but you know what I mean? Like if I got a C on a test, I was like, and my life is over. What have I done? What did I do? I've screwed up. Like probably, I mean, to an unhealthy, you know, when you start really thinking about yourself when you were younger and you're like, Oof. like what trauma was that? That <laughs> I've read far too many books on this subject. I laugh about it because otherwise, no. I had a good childhood, guys, it's okay. All right, let me talk about these two mascaras here. So one of them, again, super hyped, the Milani Highly Rated Lash Extensions Mascara. The whole thing was this was supposed to be a dupe for the Thrive Cosmetics Mascara, which is a tubing mascara. I love tubing mascaras, I have tried so many. This is the worst one I've tried, worst. Not just a bad tubing mascara, which tubing mascaras, basically they film like, or they form like tubes around your lashes and it comes off really easily with warm water so you're not like losing lashes. Holds really well throughout the day. No, this is the wettest, messiest formula, but not only that, I could get past that. It gives you like four lashes. I'll show you what I mean. Like it just clumps them together so that I'm constantly brushing through it with the lash comb. Like this is taking so much work for very little payoff. So I would avoid, avoid, avoid. Do not recommend, absolutely not. My favorite tubing mascara at the moment is the Tarte Tartlet one. Um, obviously that's more expensive. There are other mascaras I highly recommend. I'm about to kind of recommend one next, but I'll link below two of my absolute favorite mascaras and they're from the drugstore. So if you're wanting a new one, avoid this one by maybe one of those. My camera was overheating, so I'd turn it off and I can't pretend like I wasn't just laying right there watching TikTok. <laughs> laughing, laughing, laughing. Okay, there's a reason like I can't have TikTok on my like home pages. I have to find it. So like once a week I'll watch some TikToks because if I did it every day, I would just waste way too much time. Anyone else? <laughs> Where were we? All right, mascara. So this one, this is the one that I basically ended up putting on the rest of my lashes and kind of fixing the damage that the Milani one did on this side. It is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Uncensored. So this comes with a huge caveat. I do like it. I would never buy it again. And here's why. This is the messiest and not even like, it's still kind of a dry formula, but it's just so messy. Like there's so much product and then I'm like, I gotta wipe some of this off. I just feel like it's gonna dry out really quickly. I've had it a few weeks, it's still okay, but it's definitely already feeling drier than when I first opened it, of course. And because it starts so dry, it's kind of like L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I love that stuff, but it dries out so fast. So I'm like, gosh, I feel like I was buying a new one every month, you know? Anyway, so I like it but there's just that. So if you were just dying to try it, go for it. But like I said, I, I just don't know that I would like fully recommend it. The e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation. This was a retry. I had tried it years ago and loved it, but then I don't know. I felt like, well, back then for sure, they had way less shades. So there was that and I would like re, like rebuy a shade I was and then it would be a totally different color. So I felt like I couldn't trust their shades, you know what I mean? But now I feel like they've kind of got a handle of it because they've been like Elf is so scaled up now versus what it used to be. Anyway, definitely a satin finish as they say. It's not super matte, it's not super dewy, it's right in the middle, which I really like because then I can, you know, gloss it up with highlighter if I want, but I, you know, you have like a little more control over the finish, I feel like, of your face. But anyway, medium coverage, just pretty. Just pretty. It's one of those, I, when I was looking at which foundation to put on today, I was really torn because these are like two of my favorites. So it's like, it's like picking between my children. So it's honestly kind of similar. I hadn't really thought about it. It's kind of similar to the House Labs in that, again, I feel like it's kind of that middle of the road coverage wise, middle of the road finish wise. It's just really pretty and I can have, I can do a brush with it, I can do a sponge, it always looks good, it wears really well throughout the day. So this is definitely my favorite e.l.f. foundation product by a long shot. So highly recommend, I have the shade 220 Beige. So my go-to like glowy tint right now is this one. This one's from Tula, it is their Radiant Skin Brightening Serum Skin Tint. It's just really pretty. I would say you can kind of build it up, like you're gonna get a max of medium coverage, but generally it's like, medium, like light medium, you know? So yeah, I just feel like it always gives me that really healthy skin look. So this is not the thing I'm grabbing if I want my skin to look like flawless, like you can't see any freckles or discoloration, but it covers enough that I do still, like I just feel like my skin looks healthy when I use this. Do you know what I mean? It does have SPF 30 in it. I wear the shade number six and it says it has hyaluronic acid, ceramides, and collagen. I'm all for like, if I can put something all over my face that actually has good skincare in it, 
for makeup, that's pretty nice. So I really enjoy it. This is something I would purchase again. Inevitably, I will use this up and I, I can see myself buying it again. Okay, something that I don't recommend, and it took me a while to kind of figure out, I'm like, what is it about this that I don't like? So it's the very expensive Charlotte Tilbury Glow Glide Face Architect Highlighter <laughs> in Pillow Talk Glow. I don't know who's advising these brands to have titles for products that are like 15 lines long. It is so much easier for me to be like, it's the Essence Baked Highlighter, or you know what I mean? Versus like these long, anyway. This is in Pillow Talk Glow. This highlighter, first of all, mine's like spinning all around. I think you can like buy, re I don't know. Looks, it feels like something you could like buy refills on. It is a really pretty highlighter. It's not that it's ugly. This one has kind of a pink tint to it. This will show texture on your skin you didn't even know you had. <laughs> it really will. So. It's one of those, like here, let me put on just a little bit, even though I really don't want to, but I'm just gonna put on a little bit, just so you can kind of see, maybe get enough on there. It can definitely look really punchy if you want it to, but I just feel like it instantly, it can look pretty, but you can just see like, I don't know. I don't know. Now I feel like I gotta even it out because I'm going to dinner with a girlfriend tonight and I feel like, like why do you have highlighter on half your face? <laughs> she would not ask that, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I'd be thinking about it the whole time. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood, you guys. Thank you for dealing with me when I'm just talking about absolutely nothing. Just whatever comes to my mind, I just spew it out and you guys have to just deal with it. <laughs> anyway, I don't think it's ugly. Like if you already owned it, you know, like I'll still use this. I still think it can be pretty, but it's just one of those things that it's so pricey. There's better at the drugstore. I will be the first to tell you if a high-end product is worth it, but I, I hope that I'm also gonna be that person for you that will tell you when a high-end product is absolutely not worth it and this is not worth the price. <laughs> okay, but a drugstore product that I didn't like, well, it's like in the middle drugstore-ish. Uh, the Pixie brand, these liquid shadows. So these are okay. I just, I wouldn't buy them. They're pretty, right? But I felt like they would, well, I remember they creased a lot, so they didn't sit well in the eyes. I thought they looked okay. Like this is the kind of lighter one. I definitely, in the end, liked this shade, Sunset, just on its own. The white one looked a little weird once I actually blended it on. I know I tried this in a video, but anyway, that one looked a little bit better, but they're just not very good. There's better liquid shadow or cream shadow out there, and these just, they creased. They didn't have a ton of, I don't know, they just didn't really look good. I, I feel like I have been burned more often by liquid shadows than I have been not. Like, it's very rare for me to find a liquid shadow I actually think stays really well. I bought a couple other brands I'm gonna be trying out. So if I find a really good liquid shadow, I will let you know I'm on the hunt, but these were not it. So a highlighter that I think is just really pretty, but it's for a very specific subset of people. This is the Benefit Dandelion Twinkle. This does not have a lot of shimmer to it. So this is gonna be like, it almost is like a powder <laughs> with just a little bit of shimmer. So there it is right there. You can kind of see, I don't even know that you can see, it is very slight. So the one thing I like about this, it almost reminds me of that Essence Pure Nude Highlighter that's been around for like 10 years that I love because it is very subtle. This is even more subtle than that. Almost to the point where it's almost too subtle, but for days where I almost just wanna, it almost helps me like set this area of my face while adding just a little bit of glow. It's interesting. I feel like they could market this as just a glowy powder, like for all over the face because that really is kind of what it does. But I just think the finish is nice. It's kind of unique. And for me, again, I can just sloppily apply it everywhere and it looks nice. This also looks really pretty all over the eyelid. Because again, it kind of blanks out a little bit of it. It mattifies it, but it also adds, that's what's funny. It like mattifies it, but it also adds glow. I'm gonna put a little, now that I'm just like talking about this, I'm gonna get a little bit, put it on my chin here, yeah. It kind of added a glow, but it kind of like evened that area out just a little bit too. It's interesting. So this is the smaller version, but the benefit you can get, they have like smaller versions of most of their products. Um, and sometimes they go on sale. Um, but anyway, I, I just, I really like it, but I don't think it's for everyone. Oh my gosh, if you have not tried this, this is the Maybelline Vinyl, the Superstay Vinyl Ink. I'm gonna put this on, let me wipe off, because this is, just lives in my purse, I had to go dig it out. This is my favorite shade in the shade 35 Cheeky. This might also end up being in the current favorites video, but it is the thinnest formula of a lip color. It's so comfy, I don't, I can't explain it. It's so unique because it is such a thin formula. It almost feels like gloss, but it's not quite 
a gloss. It looks really pretty if you just kind of like trace over your lip there. Oh my gosh. What in the world? The formula of this is just so pretty. But I'm telling you, if you have a lip or skin color close to mine, the shade Cheeky will be your favorite. It is, it wiped, I have a few colors of this, it wiped all of them out of the water because this is exactly the color I want my lips to be on just like a normal everyday basis. You know what I mean? So I love it. I love how it's almost matte, but it's not quite matte. It, what is this formula, you guys? What is it? So run to the drugstore, give it a try. Let me know your thoughts because I have a feeling you will love it too because it is, it's like a lipstick. It kind of dries down, but it kind of stays a little tacky. It's so pretty. I should have been wearing this the whole time, man. The Essence 16 hour cover and last powder foundation. I really like this is not like my favorite powder foundation ever, but I do really like it. It again, mattifies, it covers a bit. It does have this smell that is very much chalky. Like it actually kind of smells like school chalk and that turns me off. So I've used it a ton. Now I'm wondering if it's this that's bothering my area. Like why wouldn't it bother the other areas of my face? Cause I put this everywhere. So maybe not. <laughs> I'm going to get to the bottom of this, but anyway, so I really do like it, but just know that it does have that bit of a smell, but it covers really well. It mattifies. I feel like it helps. It stays really well throughout the day. So if you can find a shade that works for you, I would recommend it. This is one of those things though, because I know the smell bothers me. I don't know now that I've used it longer, if I would buy this again when I ran out, but it is really nice. So this is something that I can give a like almost 50% review on. This is the Grande Brow two in one. So it's a tinted brow gel, but it also has a brow enhancing serum in it. So this is the brand that I use for my lashes and brows, um, just like their clear serum that you can get. It's really expensive. You have to keep using it, but it works. <laughs> it works, you guys. It really, really 100% works. But like I said, you have to keep using it. This has their brow enhancing serum in it. That's what it says. So it's like I said, got a tint. I tend to wipe off a little bit of it and I'll show you me applying it. So me, what you're seeing here, I had wiped off a bit of the color cause it was just a little bit too pigmented for me. So there's that to keep in mind. If you don't want it to be super pigmented, either don't buy it cause it is, um, and maybe go for like the elf wow brow or the um, benefit gimme brow, etc. But I do like it. Like once I wipe it off, I really like it. I love the idea that there's some serum in it. I don't know. I had someone comment this and I think they're right. You know, how much do you have to apply of it to get the actual benefits from like having enough serum on it? That's a really good point. So like for me, I don't know that this would ever replace using my brow serum like every other night. Um, but it is nice that, you know, if you do like it, like you're kind of getting extra benefit from it. So there's that. I, I could see myself maybe buying this again. I would, I feel like they need a couple more shades. They only had a couple and I feel like they could fill in some gaps in the middle and I might find a shade that I like just a little bit more. That's maybe not quite as pigmented. This rare beauty highlighter, it's their like cream one. I have the shade mesmerized. That is definitely my favorite shade. I tried a couple of them. This is very punchy. You get the smallest amount. I had my friend Laura feeling this the other day. It is for a cream like this. It is like unreal because it's more like a cream to powder. I feel like I've been saying that wrong. It really is like a cream to powder. And so for one to have this much pigment is wild. So I'll use like an eyeshadow size brush, get this tiniest amount and you swipe it on and it's just like, whoa. I love it though. I do think it could tend to emphasize texture if you went ham with it, which is easy to do. So you, I feel like there's just a little bit of a learning curve, but this is something that's gonna last forever. It's really pretty if you like that super punchy highlight, but I always feel like you gotta have that caveat. And I love the packaging. I just think it is so pretty. It also is really pretty on the brow bone. Like I feel like you can just put a little bit on there um, have I tried putting this just all over the lid now that I'm thinking about it? I feel like I keep thinking I'm gonna, and then I forget to do it, but I feel like this would be gorgeous just tapped all over the lid or even on top of here. Let's just do it. Whatever you're wearing. I can't tell if it's actually doing anything or not. Oh, maybe it is. Dang. So I feel like it's like kind of multi-purpose too. So really, really like it, but just know that it's punchy. The Essence Keep Me Cover Concealer. The more I used it, the more I just saw it breaking apart. So I felt like it looked okay when I first applied it, but I knew even then I was like, it's not a favorite. But the more I use it, the more I felt like it just, it ends up looking like what I remember crummy concealers looking like when I was younger. Like I, my point is, 
I feel like especially drugstore makeup has come such a long way and there are so many unreal products that like if you were blindfolded, you would have no idea whether it was high end or drugstore, you know? But this reminded me of concealers I used to use back in the day before like there was as many good products at the drugstore. Does that make sense? This this gives me that vibe. So I would stay away. I'm still playing with the Keep Me Covered foundation. I'm liking that more than this, but I, I'm still, I didn't feel strongly enough about it yet to include it in this video. So next speed reviews, right? <laughs> I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Um, that was a lot and it wasn't as fast as I thought it would be. I'm so sorry, but I hope that you enjoyed. Again, if you do enjoy this style of video, let me know and I will try to make an effort to do it, like I said, way more often because otherwise a lot of products just kind of get moved on from and I never get to update you. You know, I try to do it in like Instagram stories, but wow, this video ended up being so long. I'm so sorry. Anyway, I love you guys. Uh, I hope you have a great day. I hope you subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. I do obviously makeup videos, but I also do vlogs and things around like the lifestyle topic, target hauls, you know, that kind of thing. I'd love to have you join our family by subscribing. Come say hey to me on my Instagram. It is at it's Jessica Braun. Also on Facebook, um, I think it's still GM Beauty 89 over there because I keep asking Facebook to allow me to change it and they will not allow me to change it. I don't know what to do. I'm like, my hands are tied. So anyway, that's fine. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.